Alright guys, now that we have the camera taken care of, we can finally begin getting into the good stuff, moving the dude around on the screen. So how we're going to move him around on the screen is this. We're going to touch somewhere on our iPhone screen, and according to where we touch, that's the direction we want him to move. So the first thing we need to do is enable touches for our program. And remember in like 6th or 7th Coco Studio tutorial, I told you guys how to enable touches. So if you don't understand what I'm about to do go watch those tutorials again the first thing we need to do is self is touch enable that's the question they ask and our answer is yes now let's go ahead and minimize in it and under dialic or anywhere you want actually go ahead and we're going to be adding some new methods and these first methods are just the housekeeping methods again I covered this before so I'm not going to be getting in depth too much void the first thing I want to do is overwrite register with touch dispatcher looks good and now what we need to do is call cc there we go touch dispatcher just like that share dispatcher and he is going to add targeted delegate yep self priority zero Swallows touches, yes, probably a gay joke. Alright, so what this is pretty much... There we go. So what this is pretty much saying is, alright, where are the methods that you're going to use? Self, aka in this class, priority zero, swallows touches, I'm able to accept touches. Again, housekeeping stuff. Went over it in uh, like six or seven tutorials or something. The next thing we need to do is, remember, there are four different specific touch methods. The first one is a boolean and it's required. Boolean CC touch began and all we need to do is return yes in this. Again, housekeeping stuff to make sure your touch actually started. So now we can begin jumping into the good stuff. So whenever we actually pick our finger off the screen, what our program is going to do is say, all right, where did you pick your finger up? And I'm going to move the dude in that direction. So let's go ahead and start coding this. It's a void and it's CC touch ended. Those parameters are all good. Whoa, easy there. Slow down, Haas. And the first thing we need to do is just like we did previously point touch location. Get where we touch on the screen. So that's touch location in view and the parameter for this is touch view let me make sure someone tells me I typed something wrong there it went kinda quick so this is pretty much says alright where in the view did you touch I'm gonna store it in a point called touch location simple enough now we need to take this touch location and convert it to a GL point because that's the kind of point we can actually use in Cocos 2D. Again, covered this before. There we go. CC director share director and what we want you to do is call the method convert to GL and what point do we want to convert? That point we just made touch location. So now it's GL point aka a point that we can use. Why they just don't have this by default I don't know. Take it up with whoever made Cocos 2D. So the last thing we want to do is actually something that I haven't gone over before, but let me code this first. Can't talk and code at the same time. Self convert to node space. And what point do I want to convert to node space? Touch location. So here is what I'm doing in this line of code right here. Whenever we touch on the iPhone screen, say we touch in the position 4040. The coordinates 4040. Well, on the map, if the map is moved, it actually might be the coordinates 940, 940. So instead of using the iPhone screen coordinates, it uses the map's coordinates. So then we can move them all around the map instead of only in the bottom left corner. So convert to node space pretty much does this. Instead of using the iPhone's coordinates, it uses the entire coordinates for the node so that way we can use the entire map instead of just the little iPhone screen simple enough so now what we want to do after this is get the dude's position of where he is because 
we're going to need to find the difference of where he touched and where the dude already is. So CG point and just name it like player POS for player piece of well you get the point and dude dot position. So this is where the dude is currently on the screen and C CG point what this is going to do diff is CCP sub remember we learned this in the last tutorial it takes two points one is touch location and the other is player POS and it's going to find the difference of those two points so where we touched on the screen and where the player is currently so now that we have the difference in those two points what we can do is this alright check this out say your dude is chilling in the middle of the screen right now and you touch the top right corner well your iPhone's going to be looking at you and saying alright did you want him to move up or did you want him to move right well we can only move him one uh, direction at a time so what we're going to be doing is finding what is greater how far you touched up or how far you touched to the right and we're going to be moving him in that location either horizontal or vertical so that's the next bit of code I'm going to be typing right now in actually let me do this let me go ahead and pause my program and I'm gonna type this next bit of code because it's kinda of redundant and it'll be easier um, there's a bunch of parentheses I'll probably mess up if I try to talk along with it so let me pause this code a little bit and then I'll explain it I promise let me pause this Testing recording I guess so. All right, I think I'm recording. So as you can see, I got a little uh, carried away here, and I actually just coded the rest of my method. I'm sorry, but I couldn't help myself. So what I did here is you find the difference between the X and Y and which one is greater. So whenever you touch on the screen, there's obviously going to be a difference between the X and the Y. So whatever one is greater is the one you move. So in here we say, all right, is the absolute value of the difference of x greater than absolute value of difference in y? If x is greater, then we're going to move him left and right. If y is greater, then we're going to move him up and down. So if x is greater, what did we embed in here? This is just to move left or right. If x is left, excuse me, if x is greater than zero, move him right. If less than zero, move them left. Of course, this does the same thing for Y. So this pretty much, let me try this again. Do you want to move him left or right? Or do you want to move him up and down? If you want to move him left and right, do you want to move him left or right? If you want to move him up and down, do you want to move him up or down? That was a little bit better. All right, I'll take that explanation instead. So now what we did is we needed to check one thing. Make sure that the dude doesn't go off the map. So what I did is I took his position, uh, the new position that we want him to be, and made sure that it wasn't greater or less than the map size. And as long as he was on the map still, I set that position equal to player position. And we're saying, all right, where the heck is this set player position method? Well, we actually didn't code this yet. I'm actually going to code it right now. And by the way, at the end of everything, what you need to do is set center of screen method. And that's the method we built in the last tutorial. Pretty much to center the camera wherever the dude is. Alright, so now that we got all that done, and make sure you type all this code. Again, never mind. Let's just get coding the, uh, the rest of the tutorial. I bet you're anxious to see this program, how it runs. Set platypus. Set player position right there. And what I'm going to do is set dude to position equal to position. I suppose I could have done it all right here, but what's the fun in that? All right. So now let's go ahead and run this, and I should get two issues, but no error messages. So let's go ahead and see this. Big moment. There we go. All right, so as you can see, he can move left, right, up, down. 
So here's what I was talking about, and now you can visually see. So the player is right here, but I'm going to click to the top and to the right. So whenever I click it, how does he know to move up and not to move right? It's because the change in vertical is greater than the change in horizontal. So that's what we're coding with that absolute method bullcrap. So as you can see, whenever I click in the top right, it says, is the change in vertical greater or change in horizontal greater? Obviously, in this case, horizontal. So that's why I'm moving them right there. So as you can see, he can move around, but check this out. He can climb over mountains and fences. We're definitely going to have to fix that in the upcoming tutorials. So, uh, yeah. We'll have to change the his collision detection and stuff like that. So that's what we're going to be going over in the future tutorials. And by the way, these two issues we're getting right here is this. Set preliminary position. If you just go ahead and copy these headers and paste them into your interface. Set player position. And what's this other one we're getting? Oh, I think I know. Uh, yep, set center of screen right here. Copy, set center screen position. Now let's go ahead and build around this. Yep, no issues. So there, there's a nice little um, iPhone tip for you. Whenever you get an issue that says something may not respond to something else, it's because you didn't put the declaration in your interface file. So now we don't get any issues. Again, it would still work before, but you don't want those little yellow boxes popping up on your screen. So anyways, that is your tutorial. That is how you get the dude to move around the screen. <sighs> and now we can finally begin doing collision detection and fun stuff like that. So thank you guys for watching. Um, hopefully you understood after seeing him move around the screen what all this stuff meant. So uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, don't forget the next tutorial where we'll be going over even cooler stuff.